Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. I am so excited to introduce my guest today. She is a living legend in the industry. She has more than 18 AVN awards, has been crowned the AVN Trans Performer of the Year a record three times, and was the first trans woman to be a contract star. And if that wasn't enough, she was also the first person to win Trans Performer of the Year at all of the award shows in the same year. Welcome the one and only Aubrey Kate. Hello. I'm so happy you could be here. Yes, thank you for having me. Of course. As I was saying earlier, I love I just realized actually that your nail polish matches your dress. Yes. Did you did you intend that or did that just happen? I planned it. You did plan it. You're a planner. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. I am. I always have to match everything. <laughs> we were just talking about how um you have been shooting content mostly for yourself lately, right? Yeah, I haven't shot anything professional since like 2020 era, but just basically for myself, for OnlyFans and Fansly and everything in between. Yeah. I feel like OnlyFans has a lot of strict rules now, so mm -hmm. I have to like branch out so I can do different types of content. Yeah, yeah. And then um, like, how, how does that feel for you? Are you enjoying, do you miss studio life at all? Or are you really enjoying shooting your own stuff? You know, I do miss the whole like, being on set, like getting there early, getting my hair and makeup done, doing like the pretty girl photos and then getting touched up. I kind of like miss that whole on set experience. But then like when I think about it, sometimes I'm like, ooh, do I really miss it? Like I miss that part of it, but people don't realize that it's like 12 to 14 hour days, sometimes more, especially if you're on a feature. So I think I kind of enjoy working for myself because I know what angles, I know what my fans like, so I can do it in like 30, 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, I just like do it in one take mm -hmm. and it's good. So in that aspect, I don't miss it, but I do. It's yeah. kind of like 50-50. Yeah, I get it. But then also, of course, the content that you make for yourself, you own, right? Right. And, and then I just keep reselling it and yeah. make more. So it's kind of almost like I lose money going on set, you know, because mm -hmm. I can't keep that footage. And then I'm only getting paid X amount and it's normally a lot lower, Yeah, you know, where I can probably make that same amount in like three days on my OnlyFans, or, yeah. you know? Yeah. Do you find that um, your fans tend to prefer amateur content or do you get a lot of requests for professional content? I think now they do like my amateur just because I started out doing only professional and I mm -hmm. just kind of like blew up and I was on every website basically. Yeah. So I think they're in, they're enjoying that. Whereas for new performers um, that I know that have only fans that don't really do mainstream work, they kind of want more professional because they only have that option. Whereas for me, they can kind of go on Pornhub or wherever and yeah. find that professional. And then they can see like the little old me being yeah. myself. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And then also I think some guys feel that it feels more accessible, right? Yeah, more personal. Like a lot of mine, I don't do like a full glam. I'll just like morning blowjob with a stranger, mm -hmm. you know, like just like <laughs> That's how I start stuff. every single one of my mornings. Yeah. You know, normally <laughs> Some people not. need coffee. Yeah. I'm just like morning you know, blowjob. Right. Creamer for the coffee, you know? <laughs> my husband's listening to this being like, really? Hmm. It's going to hold me to it. Just kidding. He doesn't listen to this podcast. He has no idea what I'm saying. <laughs> So before we get into your whole like origin in the industry, I want to go further back to when you first had feelings that you were trans. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So I'd say like the earliest moment is like kindergarten. And I think I was maybe like four. Mm -hmm. I was born in November. So I was mm -hmm. like the cutoffs. So my mom put me in early. Mm -hmm. So I remember I had like pink scissors and a Barbie backpack. And I like always hung out with the girls. I never wanted to play any of the kickball or mm -hmm. handball or whatever those stupid things where I always yeah. like wanted to play like with the girls and I I don't know I kept getting called like these like mean names since kindergarten and I didn't know what it meant mm -hmm. like I just knew like I knew what I liked mm -hmm. so I think I've always known since a young age that's just the earliest memory I have yeah but I've always liked girly things I always wanted Barbies played with Barbies and I had them at home, like my aunt, I grew up with my aunt and my grandma, so they would let me do all that, but like behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. So my mom and my dad, like, were not into that. They would 
kind of take me away from that and dress me in baggy clothes and kind of like mask it. Mm -hmm. But just like the way I acted and the way I was, like everybody, even if I was in a baggy skater outfit, yeah. people knew. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So you, so you said that you were you lived with your aunt and your grandmother mostly. Yeah. So my parents had me in high school. Oh. So they yeah, were very really... young and they obviously didn't make it, yeah. you know, so I don't ever remember them being together ever. Um, so my grandma and my aunt lived with my grandma. She was like 14 at the time. Mm -hmm. So she was like watching me while my grandma was working and then. Okay. Yeah. So do you think that they were more accepting of you than your parents were? Definitely. Yeah. They would definitely buy me Barbies and. I remember um, I did gymnastics. My whole family did gymnastics, but I didn't like doing the guy events. Like, I didn't want to do parallel bars. I mm -hmm. didn't want to do high bar. And I just remember, like, being at the gym, my mom was a gymnastics coach. So she would just kind of take me there to basically be, like, free babysitting. Mm -hmm. But I would always be, like, on the beam. And then I was always get yelled at, say, mm -hmm. like, get off the beam or stuff like that. Because girls aren't supposed to yeah, – or girls, guys aren't supposed to yeah, be on the beam. Girls yeah, are. yeah. Okay. So, but um, they all had leotards growing up. So I remember like my grandma would like show me all my mom's stuff and like she was a cheerleader and things like that. So I'd always like put on her like cheerleading outfits at home and they were so big. I'd use like a hair scrunchie and like <laughs> scrunchie it all up in the back and do my little gymnastics team with our gymnastics floor routine with like music because guys don't use uh, music for oh, floor. Okay. So I would just put on a music that I liked and do my little tumbling down the hallway and yeah. Yeah, wow. But I always knew. You always knew. So how did your like grandmother explain to you why you had to keep it behind closed doors? Like, did she communicate it to you in a way where she was like, I'm just trying to protect you from what you're going to deal with in the outside world? I don't think she really did. She kind of had my mom do it. So she had my mom put me in boxing. Mm -hmm. So I was in boxing in like third grade because I picked Irish dancing. So I did Irish dancing and gymnastics mm -hmm. at a very young age. And my whole family wanted me to do gymnastics because my whole family did it. And I love gymnastics, but I hated all the guy events. Mm -hmm. So I chose dance and my mom like really hated that. Yeah, no. So I was just asking because, so your grandmother let oh, you yeah, do yeah. stuff behind closed doors, but then like, was there she a way to- didn't want me to get like beat up. Okay. Because like, I was like, growing up in the 90s. Mm -hmm. So like back then, like nobody knew about like trans or maybe not like, there was just not talked about, mm -hmm. you know? And if it was, it was very hidden. And where I grew up was very like, very white community where like there wasn't really any other culture. Mm -hmm. It was just like rednecks and like yeah, yeah. trailer trash. And that's kind of like where I came from, you know? So it was just like, she just didn't want me to get beat up or get hurt. Mm -hmm. So they kind of put me in like boxing just to like have that like safety. Oh, so that you could defend yourself. Yeah. But I mean, like kind of getting a little bit older, they were just kind of like, I'm just going through a phase is what mm -hmm. my mom would say. Like, I'm just going through a phase mm -hmm. and I'll get over it. Like she really wanted me to get married to like, a girl and like wanted me to marry like our next door neighbor. Like the whole like, you know, small town American mm -hmm. like thing. And I was just like, that's, not going to happen. Yeah. But yeah, I don't think they really um, kind of like cared too much as long as I was safe. Yeah. They probably also didn't know how to, because there's a lot of conversation now around it, but there wasn't back then. Yeah. I just don't think they knew what to do. What to do. Like, nobody's ever been in that position before. Like I was my mom's first kid. She was super young. You know, mm -hmm. my dad wasn't there. And then my grandma was like, what the fuck? But, like, yeah. she was just, like, as long as you're happy, like, and you're not hurting anybody, like, do you? Yeah. That's great to have at least somebody who was kind of aligned on your side in that way. Yeah, no. It, they definitely were supportive. And kind of through the whole, like, transition, like, everything, they've always been very supportive. So I've been very lucky. Mm -hmm. And I see it, like, now that she was just, like, trying to protect me, putting in these masculine clothes because yeah. if I wasn't acting that way, at least I would look that way. Mm -hmm. Just because I remember going to restaurants at like five, six years old and they'd be like, oh, your daughter's so pretty. And my mom's like, that's my son. Like, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like, so I think she would just kind of protect me in that yeah. aspect, but I didn't really like, I guess it helped in like a certain way because I didn't really get, I got beat up maybe once, but like, you know, other than that, it was yeah, just name calling. Which... 
couldn't have felt good. No, I literally had to switch schools every single year because I just, I didn't know, you know, like yeah. I didn't know what this, I know what it meant, but like, I was like, I'm not like that. Like, yeah. I like guys, but you know, I didn't understand it. Yeah. It's kind of like a mind fuck for everybody, I guess. Yeah. When did you realize that, or when did you learn that being trans was like a real thing and that you could actually, you could follow a path that would lead you to becoming the person that you felt that you were meant to be? I'd probably say after high school, I like saw like drag queens and like stuff like that, but I never like associated with drag. I felt like that was kind of like an exaggeration of something to be Mm -hmm. kind of like entertainment. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to just do this for entertainment. I just, that's how I felt. So I didn't really know about that. Um, Being a kid, like I was a model, I was with Wilhelmina in LA, like signed as a I guess a kid. So we were always in LA for auditions. And I remember my aunt would like drive through West Hollywood, like on, I think it's a Santa Monica Boulevard Mm -hmm. with all like the rainbow flags. Mm -hmm. And I remember I saw like, I guess a transsexual, but like I was so young that I didn't know, Mm -hmm. but it was like, not like a pretty one. Mm. So I was just like, kind of, I don't know. It kind of made me feel weird almost. Mm. Cause I, I was like almost judging that person, mm-hmm. not knowing them. But I think that's kind of the first time I saw something like similar that like represented who I might be. Mm-hmm. But I didn't really see any of that until like after high school, like maybe being like 16, 17 and moving to Vegas. And then people kind of like, oh, you're a T girl. You're a T girl. Are you? And I was like, I don't know what that means. And mm-hmm. then I kind of, I mean, like, Google was around, but it was, like, very, like, kind of new. Yeah. You know, like, I think, yeah. So that's, like, when I started researching and right. kind of finding stuff. But 17, 18 is, like, when I started, like, dressing full time. And Okay. Was there, like, a moment in time where, so, you know, you know, you said you always felt different, but was there a moment in time where you were, like, okay, this is the wrong body. Like, I'm, th- like, I'm going to make this transition to be who I want to be. I mean, I don't know if there was like an exact like moment. I've always like knew who I was, but I, I'm always get scared about this surgery. Yeah. You know, and I've just done so much research into that and like seeing like what happens or what could happen. And I've seen like friends go through it and then like their career is completely gone. Mm -hmm. And then like, Sometimes her sex life is gone. Are we talking about like gender reassignment surgery? Yeah, so like the, the full, full bottom, full surgery. bottom gotcha. surgery, you know? And I feel like that's kind of something where I, I would love to have it because I hate tucking, you know? Like mm-hmm. tucking every single day and like putting your balls up inside you. And mm-hmm. like, it's very uncomfortable. And it's like uncomfortable to go swimming. Like I hate going to the beach. I hate going yeah. to the pool. I hate going to the spa, especially because it's like, Sometimes it's like fully nude or yeah. like people like just like look at you weird if you're not. And yeah. like, so like from that aspect, like I would love to like do the whole surgery. Yeah. But I'm just scared. Yeah. You know, so I'm just like, there's no rush for that. Right. But I would love to like complete it one day. Mm-hmm. But when the technology and when you feel more confident there. about it. But then also too, like would that make a difference in your adult career, right? It would, but I feel like I'm kind of like, I wouldn't say I'm almost to the end, but I don't know. I don't think I would do any adult content if I got it. Mm -hmm. I think if I had it, like that'd be like my personal private life only. Like nobody could see that. Nobody could take that part away from me. Like I've given myself so much to the internet and to the world that I feel like once I completed this surgery, like, there probably will never be Aubrey Key ever again. Like nothing new, you know? Mm -hmm. I would just walk away and like start a whole new life. That makes sense. That's a very Mm -hmm. like big personal choice. And it makes sense that you would want to keep that for yourself. Yeah, you know, because it'd be nice to have somebody one day and then just be like, that's yours, you know? Yeah. And like nobody else's. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Um, All right, well, we're going to take a quick break. And then, of course, I want to talk about how you got into the industry and your whole journey in that way. So stick around, guys. We will be right back. Let's dive into a world where sexual wellness isn't just about the end game, but also about the journey. Introducing Butter Wellness, a brand that's revolutionizing the men's sexual wellness space with a focus on education, innovation, and approachability. Butter Wellness believes in empowering men to explore their bodies and pleasure in new and exciting ways. 
And what better way to do that than with their groundbreaking perineum massager? Designed to target the male G-spot, otherwise known as the prostate, without any insertion necessary. That's right, guys. You get to experience the ultimate pleasure externally. So let's keep it on the surface, literally. The perineum massager is a golden ticket to a world of much stronger full body orgasms. By stimulating the prostate through the perineum, you're unlocking a level of pleasure that's both intense and transformative. Butter Wellness isn't just selling a product, they're offering an experience. Whether you're well-versed in the art of self-pleasure or just dipping your toes into the vast ocean of sexual wellness, Butter Wellness is your trusted companion. So, are you ready to elevate your sexual wellness game? Are you prepared to discover the depths of your own pleasure? Join the ranks of men who are saying yes to better orgasms. Head over to Butter Wellness now and take the first step towards a more fulfilling, more pleasurable, and more enlightened sexual journey. Your body, mind, and soul deserve nothing but the best. And with Butter Wellness, that's exactly what you will get. And right now, Butter Wellness is offering our listeners 15% off of your entire order when you enter code HOLLY at butterwellness.com. That's Butter Wellness, B-U-T-T-E-R-W-E-L-L-N-E-S-S, and use code HOLLY to get 15% off of the Perennium Massager or the Butter Starter Kit butterwellness.com, code Holly. The link is also in the episode's description. All right, we are back. So Aubrey, let's talk about your journey into the adult industry. How did that whole thing start? Well, um, I started out, can I talk, say I escorted? Of course. Okay, so I started out escorting underage. Mm -hmm. So I don't know about that, but I started, I moved to Las Vegas. I got a full ride scholarship to UNLV. Oh, wow. I was super young. And when I got there, there was literally nothing to do. Like everything is What did you get a scholarship on? Was it like just academics? Academics. And then I was on cheer. So that kind of helped. Um, But yeah, I got there and like everything was either 18 and that was for strip clubs Mm -hmm. and then 21 for everything else. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what to do. And so I like I think there was like an atom for atom or something like weird. It was like for like gay guys. And mm-hmm. I was like a little twinky kind of thing back mm-hmm. then, like during the day. So I like went on there and would kind of meet people. And then I started doing that and it was super scary. And I was like, I cannot do this. Um, and then I met a guy and he kind of was like, no, you're not doing that. Let's put you on webcam. So I started doing stream eight and I was doing really good on that. I was like mm-hmm. making like 200 an hour. And that was like really good money for me, you Mm -hmm. know? And I was like, heck yes. I was doing that. And while I was doing that, um, I think her name was like Miss Berlin and she Mm -hmm. worked for kink.com. Oh yes. And she called me. I know exactly who that is. like, can we have an interview or like talk about the porn industry? I would love to have you. We need you for TS deduction and all this stuff. And I was like, okay. So we talked and then I was like, no, I can't do that. Like Mm -hmm. my family will kill me. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's kind of something I've always wanted to do. Like, I've always wanted to do porn. Like, my grandpa and grandma, like, when I lived with them, under their bed, like, my grandma had, like, hustlers and penthouse and, like, all this stuff. So, like, it's, like, probably, like, late 80s -hmm. stuff. And, like, when I opened the magazine. basically all my mom's work. Honestly, probably. (laughs) The one I remember, it was, like, um, it was, I think it was, it was either penthouse or hustler. And it was on a bicycle and she had like pads and like this big hair and mm-hmm. like a bandana thingy. And I was like, I want to be that. <laughs> and so I kind of always wanted to do it, but I was scared. And I ended up being with my boyfriend for like maybe like four months later. And then we had a huge breakup and he like threw dick pills at me. And he's like, you're going to need these for your next boyfriend. Like, you're so bad at sex. Like, you don't even know how to suck dick. Like, just like mean, wow. like so mean. Wow. And I used that and she called me like maybe a week later and she's like, are you ready to do it? And I was like, yes. Yeah. So I said yes. And I ended up meeting a couple of friends at a pool and they were friends with a few industry workers. And I told them that I was working for kink.com. Like, but back in the day, like it was when it was at the armory and like they booked like two months in advance. So like I had this booked for two months and I still had this like huge gap. And I told them and they were like, oh, well, we know all these people in LA, like they were living in Chatsworth and they were like, can we give your number out? And I said, sure. And like literally the next day, I think I had like 
12 shoots booked before the kink shoot that I had wow. initially booked. Yeah. So it was like so many. So like my very first scene was like for a site. I don't even think it exists anymore. It was called Shemel Strokers. <laughs> and it was like a solo. Mm-hmm. And that was my first one. It was in Las Vegas at this like super shitty like motel. <laughs> and I got there, like, I'm always early or, like, on time. That's mm-hmm. kind of something I've always had with me. And I got there, and I was, like, in my, like, car that my mom bought me. It was, like, an old Audi, but it was, like, the air conditioning didn't work. It was in the summer. Oh, God. And I'm, like, I had full face of makeup and, like, clip-ins back then. Yeah. You know, they're, like, so awful. <laughs> and I'm, like, waiting. I'm, like, hi, I'm here. He's, like, oh, my scene's running late. Because you know how porn goes. Like, yeah. it's always running late. Always. And so I'm, like, so I'm, like, fuck. And I'm like, I'm just sweating. And then I go in there and I did it. And I remember like my cum shot like went like behind my head. And he's like, you're going to be a star one day. And I was like, <laughs> oh, thank you. But like, it was like a nasty motel room. It was like very creepy. It was like a disgusting set. I think he just had like a piece of material, like paper clipped or like thumbtacked behind me. Yeah. Like it was just very basic. So that was like my first experience, like on a porn set. Kinda. How did that make you feel? Did it make you like question felt, your choices? Yeah, no, I felt disgusted and I didn't tell my family that I was going to do it. So after that, I was like, fuck, I need to tell my mom because she's like, not that she's going to find it, but like it's going to get out. Yeah, of course. You know? So I called her that day and I was like, mom, like I filmed porn <laughs> and like it wasn't with anybody. It was just myself. And she's like, okay, well, like, did you hate it? And I was like, not really, but. I just wanted to let you know. And she's like, okay, well, if you're going to do it, like just be the best that you can be in it. And as long as you're safe. And those are like the only two things my mom said was be safe and be the best you can be. Oh, I like that. So like, it was really cool. And my mom's always been super supportive. Like she went to the AVN with me, I think in like 2020 Mm -hmm. and like a few other award shows. Like she's not like proud, like, oh, my daughter's a porn star. But she like accepts me for who I am and like is proud of like my accomplishments. That's great. So... That was like my first thing. But then I guess kink.com, that was like my first real like big set. Mm -hmm. And I feel like nothing ever like compares to that anymore. Mm -hmm. Just because they like flew me in and they like had somebody there at the airport. And then they drove me in, dropped me off at the castle and then put us in like in the dorm rooms. And then Mm -hmm. we got our hair and makeup and went to wardrobe. And then we went to like the dungeon area. And there was like all these cool elaborate sets and like the ceilings had all these lights like that were like there you know so like after I went there I was like wow okay this is like this is it like I'm so excited but then that scene unfortunately was like my it was like a big scene but it turned out to be a little bit bad because the guy performer who I was filming with apparently got HIV like all within that week oh my god and so like it was like all in AVN news like like his name like linked with Aubrey K, HIV, Mm -hmm. like, scare. So, like, I had all these, like, death threats and, like, mean things. Death threats from who? Like, fans? Just fans of him saying, like, I'm a dirty girl. This is why, guys. Oh, trying to say that you gave it to him. Yeah, because I was a top. Right. Okay. Kink. And it was a condom scene. Mm -hmm. But people were like, thank God she used a condom, whatever, like, just like mean things like I'm gonna kill you. You ruined my favorite porn star. Now I can never watch him again. Like all wow. these things. And I was like, even oh though God. you didn't get it. Yeah, I like I didn't get it. And that was like did, my did, first scene. Did these people know how infectious diseases were? Right. And <laughs> like then if you don't out, have it, then like clearly <laughs> you didn't get it from you. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But I guess it came out to like, I guess they were sharing needles and like his girlfriend got it and like all these mm-hmm. other things. I think I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But it was like a big scary thing. And Oh, no. So that kind of like... Is that scene even out? Or it did is. they pull it? it, it yeah, okay. it's still out. And I actually did a little Irish dancing in that too, because it was like country Western. And they're like, oh, you Irish dance, do a little thing. And I was like, in these like cowboy boots that were like four sizes too big. And I'm like, I'm <laughs> die, but whatever you want. But yeah, so that was like kind of like my first experience on like a real yeah. porn set. But it was for kink, right? So there was yeah. some kind of like BDSM involved in it? Yeah. So I think I had to like tie him up. I had to top him. Okay. It was like kind of very light BDSM. Right. Okay. For my first one. Had you ever, did you do that in your personal life at all? No, never. No. So I how- was like basically like 
not a virgin, but I only had sex with maybe like three or four guys before getting into porn. Oh, wow. Because like I would escort, but I was like the worst escort ever. <sighs> I'd be like, oh, I don't do that. I don't do that. Like, I would just suck their dick. Like, I love sucking dick. Like, that's my favorite thing to do. Really? So, like, half the time, they'd be like, oh, slow down, slow down. You're going to make me come. And I would just keep going faster. Yeah. I was like, come, <laughs> bitch. Like, because if they come, then most of the time, they're not going to, like, want to fuck. After right, they're over right. It, you know? So, I just feel like <laughs> in and out in 10 minutes, you know? <laughs> Same rate. Yeah. <laughs> you pay for Got the experience. The money, but, got it. But, yeah. I can't imagine doing that ever again, but... <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. I love <laughs> Gotta that. Gotta start somewhere, you know? Hey, I mean, that's that's pretty common for a lot of people. And I found that um, a lot of girls are more willing to talk about it now. Before, like, people would never admit it. But yeah. now, now people are, I think, you know, as we're being more open about sex work in general, and there's less of that, you know, horarchy where we're like, I'm a porn star, you're an escort, I'm better than you kind yeah. of situation. That's I mean, changed honestly, a lot. escorts make so much more money, you know? Yeah. I, that's the reality. But it's more dangerous, for yeah. sure. Yeah. But yeah, there's a lot of like fake ads that are still up. Like mm -hmm. there's like erotic monkey, which I don't even know. I've never really been on it, but like people call me they're like, hi, I got your number on erotic monkey. And I'm like, it's me, but that's not my ad. Yeah. So like, it's kind of weird. I'm sure if people try to find like escort things for me, they can, but like. It's not me. Yeah. It's like crazy exes that like post them, you know? Yeah. People also just like catfish all the time. I've, I've sure. had my pictures show up, not my name, but just my yeah. pictures show up on escorts. Yeah. Same. They'll like use my pictures, mm -hmm. but a different name. I'm like, yeah. All if the this time. person's a fan of trans like women, like they're going to know that like, right. That's me, not. And I wonder Susan like how Hannah's that works thing. if you do it. It's probably got to be a bait and switch situation. For be, sure. Because obviously I'm not going to be the one who shows up at your yeah. door. Yeah. So it's going to be, know. oh, she's not available, but this person is. I think yeah. that's generally how it works. I don't know. I wouldn't know. If somebody accidentally tries to book me as an escort, follow through. Let me know how it goes. Let me know who shows <laughs> up at your door because it's not going to be me. Same. <laughs> uh, so you had to take a six-month break from shooting after an injury during one ambitious scene. What happened? Yes. So I was in contract and... Um, you know how these companies are. They always want to be something bigger, something better, something more extreme. Mm -hmm. And so I already did double anal. Mm -hmm. And that was like a big thing. I only did it once because. a I'm, lot. Yeah, it's a lot in one hole. It's a yeah. Lot. You know, like I've always wanted to be DP'd like in a vagina and like a butthole. Mm -hmm. Like if that was me, that'd be like, that's my fantasy, you know, mm -hmm. but like not two in the ass. Mm -hmm. But so since that already happened, they wanted to step it up and they wanted me to do triple anal. Mm -hmm. And they were all like porn dicks, you know, mm -hmm. so they're a lot bigger Very than big. normal. And I just remember the guy was just like super aggressive because like I was basically sitting on it, you know, like facing the one guy so that the other guy can like stand and go in. Right. And he just shoved it in, and my butthole literally just shot blood, like, oh my God. everywhere. Like, oh. there was, like, it was just everywhere. It looked like a murder scene, oh. and, like, it hurt so bad. Like, I was in the worst pain that I had to, like, go to the hospital, and they had to, like, put me in, like, emergency surgery, like, oh. for my butthole. And, like, they gave me a whole, like, they had to, like, stitch it up and did, like, a whole surgery on it. But, like, for six months, like, to go to the bathroom oh. was, like, the worst pain. And, like, you have to clean it, obviously, or I'll get infected. So just, like, cleaning and, like, I basically lived in a bath. I was just, like, doing the sits baths and just, like, oh sitting God. in it. But, yeah, that was probably the worst pain I've, like ever gone through so like now i'm just like i'm not a size queen i do not want big dicks I yeah do, like i love rough sex but like there has to be a shit ton of lube and like yeah a lube shooter you gotta be warmed and, like, up and ready to yeah. go so like after that i've always kind of been scared because i know my fans love to see me do wild and crazy things yeah but i just don't know if i have it in me to like yeah. you know like one's enough yeah one's you know, plenty like a good big one is enough so you were doing triple anal was this the third dick that was going in you or this is only the second this one this was the third so i was already in double you were already in double the third one that way and just shoved it Ooh, i hope he felt really awful oh he did he like sent me flowers and like <laughs> or it ripped chocolates. your butthole and i was like i'm not trying to eat right now i don't want to poop <laughs> like i was just trying to eat you should have sent you like fucking flowers and some colates like some ivs or something like <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. Ooh, God, that's rough. 
So you were the first trans contract girl in history, right? To my knowledge, that's what we're gonna go with that. We're gonna. I think so. The truth. I know, like Vanity, I wasn't around, but someone said she was a contract star, but I don't know. Okay, I'm not sure. So. I don't, I just want to say that because I know that she, I don't know her career, but I know that she's like messaged me and said like a few things before. Okay. But I know I was the first for sure for Evil Angel and the only TS. I think there's only ever been two for Evil Angel. It was Mm -hmm. me and then Katrina Jade. So one TS and one cis girl. Mm -hmm. So did you feel like a lot of pressure around that? Um, to be honest, not really. Only because I was working mostly with Aiden Starr. And mm-hmm. me and her just like became like she was like my mom, basically. Yeah, she's great. You know, so she was like my porn mom and I was so comfortable with her that she kind of like would film everything that like I would create almost. Mm-hmm. Like I'd be like, I want to do this, this, and that. And she would like make it happen and make it look beautiful. Mm-hmm. So I think it was just like magic when we worked together. Yeah. Having a great director, I think, like means a lot, like who you work with. Exactly. And I think we just like worked well. Like yeah. some directors are kind of like, okay, you're going to moan at 30 seconds. You're going to yeah. do this. Where I've yeah. been on those sets too, where it's just so like fake, you and know, formulaic. where like she, like she filmed me before my contract. So she kind of already knew how I worked. Mm-hmm. So she'd basically be like, okay, we need to get this, this, and this. I'm not cutting. Just do your thing. And it was mm-hmm. basically most of the time it was just like a one take. Wow. It was very like smooth yeah those are the best kinds yes and then sometimes i'd work with somebody and they like they would be calling cut and i'm like what are you doing like yeah i'm one take aubrey kate like that's my name you know like (laughs) we're getting it done i love that (laughs) yeah yeah i try and i really try not to micromanage the sex scenes because like that's the place you're the expert right yeah. this is what you do like this is your job like yeah i don't i guess just like certain ones like evil angel obviously ones like more hardcore mm-hmm. or like transsensual they want to be more like sensual mm-hmm. and yeah like, so i guess i get that kind of but yeah. when they tell you like you're doing this position and this and this and this is like you have too much thinking you know yeah. and then it's just like it doesn't come out organic it just yeah it's like robotic almost yeah and it breaks up the continuity but i get it too because sometimes you got to get those different camera angles you have yeah. to set up for that different camera angle so you got to move the lights and everything and yeah yeah i guess it just depends what kind of scene you're filming yeah so you've been in the industry for over a decade now um and specifically as a trans performer what are some of the biggest changes you've seen in the industry and what are some of the changes that you'd still like to see happen Well, I have seen now that there are a few um, like modeling agencies that have trans Mm -hmm. women. So they represent that, which before there was Mm -hmm. none. Not only that, but like a lot of the mainstream agencies wouldn't even rep trans performers. Yeah, they wouldn't rep them. And then like also they wouldn't really let like their talent film with us. Yes. So it's kind of like, yeah, that's changed. I know I started like towards the end of my I wouldn't say end of my career, but like when I started, stopped filming, I was filming with mostly just Spiegler girls, Mm -hmm. which was kind of like a big thing because before they weren't really filming with trans models either. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've been seeing a lot of trans girls on the cover. Emma Rose hosted the X biz. So that's like huge to finally see like one of us like Mm -hmm. uh, host something and I know she's been on the magazine too, AVN Magazine. She's mm-hmm. been on that a lot too. So it's kind of cool to like see that they're bringing on more trans women mm-hmm. and showcasing us in other places. Mm-hmm. So, does the yeah. trans community feel like a tight knit community? Like, do you feel like camaraderie with other trans performers? I don't know. You know, it's kind of like we're there for each other, but then I kind of feel like everybody's out for themselves too. Mm-hmm. So it's like there is. Like when we go to the T show, like where it's just the trans awards, I feel like everybody goes there and like we reunite and like it's all friends. But then sometimes like towards the end, it's just like there's a lot of drama. Mm-hmm. Because some people didn't win what they wanted to win. Yeah. It's just like kind of all that stuff. I've never really like liked awards. I hate speaking in front of a huge like audience or mm-hmm. I don't know. It always makes me nervous. Public speaking. Yeah. Public speaking is just not my specialty so i don't know yeah i mean it's intimidating for sure i always thought that like i actually don't mind public speaking at all but i definitely still get nervous like when i went to the expos awards and i like 
did a speech, you know, for my mom, I was like, <sighs> I got up there. I'm like, I am nervous. And I was sure that I was going to walk up there and feel like cool as a cucumber. Everything is going to be fine. And I got up there and I found I was shaking a little bit and I was like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, it's I thought weird, I was going to be okay. But it's weird. I think it's also because we know everybody in the room. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like that's true. we're like, I can dance like on a stage mm-hmm. and like, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But like speaking and then like being in front of people, you know, you're like, fuck, if I say something wrong or like stutter or do anything, like people are just going to make fun of me or like, yeah. who's recording this right now? It's going to end up on Twitter. Uh-huh. Like, so yeah. that aspect. Or do like a really, really long speech, like oh, a Shakespearean drags. quote, <laughs> quote Shakespeare for about <laughs> 10 minutes. Definitely not. <laughs> referring to anything specific. <laughs> Have you had any negative experiences in the industry with transphobia? Uh, yes, but it was literally on my last movie, the I Am Aubrey movie oh, okay. with one of my partners. Really? Mm-hmm. So like I drove all the way. So I was living in New York and I have a house in Vegas too. Mm-hmm. So I flew from New York to Vegas and drove down to LA like all in one day. Mm-hmm. And I had a call time of like 5 a.m. or something because I had to get in hair and makeup. And he came and he was like messaging me like on Twitter. And mm-hmm. you probably know who it is. but Oh, I do remember yes. this story. And he like came on set and like I did my whole interview. He did his whole interview. And during his interview, they asked like, are you excited like for your first trans experience or something like that? And I guess he didn't know, which I don't understand because like this was like my eighth or ninth year in the porn industry, you know? And like, I already won my three AVN awards, like performer of the year. And like, he was there, like, and he fucking shook my hand and said, congratulations. So it was very weird. But then he left and like Aiden came up to me and she was like, um, he had a herbie outbreak. Like, just, like, totally lied to, like, not hurt my feelings. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah. And, like, I don't know if he has that, but whatever. But that's, yeah. like, what she told me. She was like, he had a herpes outbreak. Sorry, but, like, can we do somebody else? Yeah. Like, trying to just, like, not kill my mood or, like, yeah. make me feel bad or sad. And then he, like, messages me. And he's like, how dare you trick me? Like, all this stuff. I was like, my very first pain of my Twitter is my dick out. You know, like it was like me holding my dick yeah. and it was like yeah. only fans, like all this stuff. Did he message you on tw- on Twitter? Yeah. And it was like this whole like nasty thing and he blocked me and all this stuff. And then there was like some YouTube that was like, Aubrey Kate ruins so-and-so. And it was like this like hour like video and they're like posting up like screenshots and stuff. And I'm just like, what the heck? Wow. But that was kind of like my only time like, yeah, facing that, and it was just kind of a whole weird ex- experience. It was like, yeah. what? Yeah, I mean, how do you feel like if somebody doesn't want to work with someone who's trans? So I have like, I guess, two different parts of that. Mm-hmm. I feel like guys are in my DM that just want to fuck me behind camera mm-hmm. and not let anybody know. Okay, like so then- you can go fuck off. Yeah. You know, but like if you're not into trans women and like you don't want to film with a trans woman, like who cares? Like they're just not into it, you know, like you're not making. I mean, there's some like guy performers that say they do like they do gay porn and they're straight, Mm -hmm. you know, like I don't get that because like I guess I do at some sort of as well. I kind of get that because like I do not like women like I'm Mm -hmm. not sexually into women, but Mm -hmm. I film a lot with women. Mm -hmm. But like, I have to, like, take a lot of dick pills and, like, have, like, porn on the back. Like, <laughs> I feel bad for the girl, but they all know. Uh, yeah. Like, they know that I'm not yeah. into it. And it's like, I'm a lesbian for pay. Yeah, you yeah, know? I get but, it. So, I, I don't know. I guess it's kind of, like, it depends. Yeah, I mean, I think there's, sexuality can be, I think, a lot more fluid than people will accept. Yeah. And then also, there's a lot of shame, especially around men. Like, you know, having sex with like somebody who's not like a cis woman like that's been built into a lot of guys even if they you know have interest in that yeah that you know they're shamed for that or even like even if they like ass play in any shape or form like with a cis woman you know there's a lot of guys who have like issues around that too i think it's especially hard for men so i feel like women are a little bit more judgy yeah honest Yeah. yeah 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 no i think yeah i think definitely i think like yeah. You know, women are, 
I mean, there, I remember it's definitely changed a lot now, but I remember there was a time that a lot of women in the industry would not work with a guy who'd ever, ever done gay porn, porn, even if it was like 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, or like did, worked with trans or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes I would book somebody with like, say, Christian Triple X. Yeah. Right. Who worked with a lot of trans. And then the girl would find out and then she'd like demand that I replace him. Yeah. And it's like, well, I can't, I can't tell you who to have sex with. Right. Like that's a personal choice. Yeah. No, exactly. But it's also like. Right. I feel like that's where it helps with the whole yes and no list. Mm-hmm. I had more of a yes list than a yeah. no list towards yeah. the end. I was just like, <laughs> I will work with these. 10 guys and those yeah. 10 guys only. Yeah. And then you at least know like who you're working with yeah. and you're comfortable with them and you have that chemistry and right. And that's always really And that's nice. kind of the thing with like transport too. There's literally only like 15 guys that like yeah. are active consistently to do right. porn, you know? Yeah. What do you think the secret to your success has been? Like what has set you apart from other performers? I would say my secret to my success would be that I'm always on time. So being punctual. Um, you were early even here. You got here before I did. I know. I'm always early. <laughs> um, I guess because I'm nervous. I have to like always get the nerves out, you know? No, I mean, believe me, as a, like a producer, I love people that are early. It's great. Yeah. Early. And then I would say like my style. Mm-hmm. I, that like when I'm Aubrey, like I'm Aubrey mm-hmm. always. So back in the day, I feel like when I would see trans porn, it was always like, tranny prostitute Mm -hmm. and it was always a tranny word and I Mm -hmm. always hated that you know um and I'd like see these videos and it'd just be like girls in like basically like a box set you know like Mm -hmm. from like Santee Alley or something like very cheap and ghetto Mm -hmm. and I just wanted to step that up so I would just only wear like agent provocateur a la perla and I would basically spend my entire paycheck on my next outfit and Mm -hmm. I would just kind of reinvest in like putting it in my wardrobe but I feel like that kind of showed a little bit because I put a little extra effort in mm-hmm. my appearance and and that you like you took your job seriously, seriously and your appearance yeah. and your brand seriously yeah and I think it was more of like my branding and branding it at such an early start that kind of separated me yeah that like I was always gonna look like a million bucks mm-hmm. and even if I was gonna be a hooker like I'm gonna look like a high-end hooker <laughs> you know like <laughs> yeah. or if I was like a cheerleader I was like the rich girl cheerleader you yeah. know like I always had to like one up it a yeah. little bit to the character. You've always been like one of the best dressed at the award shows. Oh, like when I've seen you, you, you always look fabulous. And like I said today, like <laughs> today, like your outfit is gorgeous. Thank you. I love fashion. So <laughs> uh, you have a story about meeting two guys, finding out they were both into trans and then something very unexpected happened. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. So this is actually um, after an AVN mm-hmm. one year. And I just won my trophies and my friends left. And it was like at the circle bar, mm-hmm. like that huge bar. Oh, yes. And I had my, I just had my one trophy with me and my friends like took the other one. But the performer of the year, like it came with me every year, like mm-hmm. everywhere for like probably like six months. I was like so proud of it. Yeah. But I'm like sitting at the bar and these like guys come up to me and they're like very attractive and they're like, oh, congratulations. And I was like, thank you. And they're like, oh, would you win? And I was like, performer of the year and they're like oh I don't know you you know Mm -hmm. and I was like I let the trans out for a minute and I was like trans performer of the year and they're like oh you're really pretty and all that and um like one was like a little bit younger and one was a little bit older and they Mm kind of look similar and I was like are you guys brothers or like what and Mm -hmm. they're like oh that's actually my dad and that's like, oh, that's my son. And I was like, oh, you guys are hot. You guys want to fuck? And I was like, totally just like being a little drunk, but like mm-hmm. kind of serious. And they're like, wait, really? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, we have a room upstairs. And I was like, let's go. And so I was like, fuck it. And so we went upstairs and they like didn't do anything together. But right. They just like took turns on me. And wow. it was like so hot. And like, I've never really done anything like that. Because normally I'd be kind of freaked out. Yeah. Yeah, so I'd probably say that's like one of the kinkiest, wildest like stories. That's crazy. Actually, did they? Okay, so obviously didn't interact with each other, but do they seem like comfortable having sex? I think they've definitely done this before. Okay, for sure. Like (laughs) I think like because they're so good looking, and I guess like I 
didn't really ask about like the wife or if there was a wife or anything like that. I just kind of was like, fuck it, we're in the moment. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like they've definitely do this often, unfortunately. But I don't even remember their names and didn't get their phone number. Like it was just kind of like a one time after it was done, like I left and like. Yeah. Just a memory for you to to hold on to. Yeah. Oh my God. That's wild. I I wish that was a real scene because I would watch it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, one could be the stepdad. Right. I'm sure you've probably <laughs> done a scene like that already. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> so um, what advice would you give for any trans girls who are considering joining the industry? I guess like a few things. I guess the first one is to like triple think, not just overthink, mm-hmm. but like consistently like write everything down that's possible. Because once you do this, Like, there's no going back. You can't erase it. Like, Mm -hmm. I always thought, like, oh, like, I'm not going to be famous. I'm not going to be, I'm just going to do two scenes, you know, and then I blew up. Mm -hmm. So you kind of never really know, like, how well you're going to do. You're either going to be amazing or you'll get by for a few years, you Mm -hmm. know, and then it's just up to you. So your scenes are always going to be up on the internet. Um, And then also, like, to think about future relationships, too, because as judgmental as people are, like with being an escort or whatever, like this is porn. So like their friends or their family is going to find it or be able to see it. So you have to think about like your future that way as well. Have you had a hard time dating? Yes and no. Like finding guys to date, very easy. Mm -hmm. But like, I wouldn't say even keeping them, but like me wanting to stay with them, like very hard. Cause like, Mm -hmm. I feel like every guy is so nice at first and then a month goes by and then they're awful. Mm -hmm. And that's both with like, fan guys and like guys in the industry have dated both. Mm. So what was dating fans like? Like, how did that come about? This guy got my number online randomly and he was like, hey, can I buy you your red carpet outfit? Everything I feel like always happens around AVN for Mm -hmm. me. So he's like, can I buy you your red carpet outfit? And I was like, Sure. And he ended up going and he's like, hey, like, I'm so-and-so. I sent you money for this. Like, can I take you to dinner? And I was like, sure. And he like took me to Nobu and it was like this super expensive dinner. Um, And he's like, can I take you shopping tomorrow? And I was like, sure. So it kind of kept like yeah. almost like a sugar daddy. Yeah. Almost where like I kind of fell for him because I was like, he's actually kind of attractive. He's cute. Like, yeah. But then he just kind of got like obsessed you know, and like he didn't live close mm-hmm. and like he would like text me some scary stuff. And that's when I was just like, oh, I no. have to like end this now. And he kind of called me for maybe like two or three years after just randomly, but it kind of stopped now. Yeah. Oh, gosh, but that's scary. I don't know. I feel like sometimes fans, they kind of get like obsessed and they think like they know you more than they actually know you. Mm-hmm. And then they fall in love with like, the Aubrey on camera, like getting fucked like this, like dirty girl. And I'm just like, I'm a little like that, but like just a little, you know, like everything on screen is definitely over-exaggerated. Yeah. Do you think that you would ever take a chance dating a fan again? Maybe. I just, I don't know if like a super fan, Mm -hmm. you know, I think it's kind of hard for me now to date somebody and not know, like, they're going to know who I am. Right. More than likely. Like every guy watches porn. And if yeah. they're going to date a trans girl, I'm sure they've seen me. Yeah. So I think like if I were to date, I wouldn't say if they're going to be a fan, but like I would date somebody that knows that I do porn and knows I'm a porn star, but like not a fan. Gotcha. So maybe somebody who's like seen your videos and like, you know, maybe has jacked off to you a few times and yeah. is like, she's great, but maybe not somebody who necessarily like subscribes to your OnlyFans. And- yeah you know, like watches all your movies and, you know, yeah. like follows you in that Just way. Just like, I don't even watch all my movies, you yeah. know, like I don't want to see any of that stuff anymore. Yeah. I'm kind of like past it. Yeah. Understood. Do you feel like a responsibility to look out for new trans performers? Like, do you ever get people reach out to you and ask you, give you, ask her advice? I feel like all the time. And I actually started like an agency called Transcending, mm-hmm. um, which is, mostly just trans women. There are a few cis women and a couple of guys that I have on. Um, But it's kind of like to help them with everything, almost like a management team, Mm -hmm. you know, like we are there to like help you on your platforms, not like 
be you, Mm -hmm. but be like, this is what's selling right now. Mm -hmm. These are the good colors. Like these are the scenes that are selling the most Mm -hmm. and kind of like giving them like a little like syllabus almost like every week of do this, do this, do that. And it's definitely like helped them grow from like 10,000 to like 50,000 a month, just like doing like certain little things like that. Mm -hmm. So I would, wouldn't say I'm like there all the time to like email these girls and like help them. I feel like that would be a very big responsibility. There's always a girl that's turning 18 tomorrow, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So I feel like that, I was just getting it so much that I was just like, I'll have an agency. And if you want to come, like you're more than welcome and I can help you that way. But other than that, I feel like there's not really much that I can help with, you know, like you need to have your own brand and establish your own brand. The only thing that I can probably tell you is show up on time and just listen to the director and do what you're told. Yeah. So you're more there for like help with marketing and stuff like that. Yeah. Because you've got a lot of experience in that. I feel like I've helped like other people like in the past and like tried to style them and then they just kind of like rip me off, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I can't do that. So I don't really know how to like help you. Like, Mm -hmm. what do you want me to do? Like stretch your butt hole out for you? Like, (laughs) you know, I don't know what you want me to do for you. Just show up on your time and do what you're told. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) So um, any big plans for the rest of the year, work or personal? I mean, I'm going to Hawaii tomorrow, so I'm excited for that. That Sounds pretty awesome. Um, And I think I might be moving back to New York because okay. I'm in Vegas right now. Mm-hmm. So I think I might get a place back in New York. Um, and as for work, I hope so. I would like to do something, but as long as it's like worth my while. Yeah, understood. So you'll come, because you haven't shot professional porn in a while, right? Yeah, it's been like almost three years. Okay. So you're open to doing studio porn again if the you got the right offer. Right. I think I just, like I said, I want to be a contract girl again. Yeah, I you get know? that. I feel like I, I do what I'm told and... I'd rather just be like, hey, these are the five days or here's the four days you're working this month, like be here Mm -hmm. and show up. And that's like all I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Because I I was talking to like another agency and they were going to represent me, but then they wanted me to move out here and they wanted me to be like three weeks out of the month available and I can't live in LA. Yeah. It's just not for me. What's what's wrong with LA? I don't know. I grew up in Orange County mm-hmm. and I don't know. Every time I come to LA, I just get like depressed. <laughs> like it's just like a mood like switch just turns off and I'm just like depressed. I hate it. I don't know. I just the weather's great, but everything else is I mean, Mary Wan's cool, but everything Air-Wan. else. The only thing I love about else. LA is, is the weather in Air One. <laughs> That's it. Maybe a few people. But like, other than that, like, I don't know. I don't see what the big deal of LA is. Mm-hmm. I'm more of a New York girl for sure. What is it about New York that like makes you a New York girl? I just feel like I can walk out of my place and walk anywhere. Yeah. Where I was living, I walk out my door, the water was right there. Mm-hmm. And then like five blocks to my left was Central Park, mm-hmm. you know? And then there's everything. There's every shop. There's everything that you need. And everything is walkable. Mm-hmm. Where in LA, you have to drive a minimum of 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Like you're always in the car. And then mm-hmm. when I'm in the car, like I like to snack. So I feel like I'm getting fat here. <laughs> you know, like in New York, you're just walking at so fast paced. And yeah. here it's, everybody's like high as fuck in traffic. And then people here are like, road rage it's just yeah. like i don't know and it's not that, pretty here anymore i feel like there's just yeah. tents everywhere and yeah. cardboard boxes and yeah. i don't feel safe okay that makes sense do you feel like there's more authenticity to people in new york than there is in la i feel like in new york nobody really bugs you unless you bug them mm. you know everybody kind of keeps to themselves like mm-hmm. If somebody's homeless, like they'll have like a sign, but they really won't be begging or they'll like try to be selling something where like here it's like change and like quarters or they'll like have like a fake funeral for like their daughter on signs. And then you just see them like multiple times. Like I lived out here for a while yeah. and I would just see the same person for the same funeral thing. And like I donated, I gave them like a hundred dollars one time and then I saw them two months later and I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? So have you buried fake? your fucking daughter yet? Yeah. So I'm just like, <laughs> I don't know. People here, they're just more scam artists. Yeah. I feel like we're in New York. Like they love it. And they're just going to be in their little like blankets wrapped around like on the street, you know, and they kind of mind their own business. Yeah. 
Yeah, I hear you. And they don't really make like a huge mansion out of trash, like out of here. It's like (laughs) their house is bigger than mine and it's free, kind of. (laughs) You know, like what? (laughs) Oh my God. Oh my gosh. Well, Aubrey, thank you so much for coming on. And um, we're going to do, I have some bonus Patreon questions for you, if you're okay with that. Yes, Yes. Also, speaking of Patreon members, I want to give a shout out to our newest member, Tristan. Thank you so much for joining us and supporting the show. Um, And in the meantime, can you tell everybody where they can find you online, please? Yes, I have uh, my Instagram, which is official Aubrey Kate. And on my link, I think it's all my links is on there. Um, That goes to my OnlyFans, my Fansly. My Twitter is Aubrey Kate triple X. Uh, my TikTok is Aubrey Kate 13, but I never really use it because they always kick me off. Yeah. Um, but yeah, OnlyFans, you can go directly to AubreyKate.com. We'll take you there. Perfect. But yeah, OnlyFans and Fansly. Perfect. And then you guys can find me on Instagram and on X or Twitter at Holly Randall. Of course, if you want to support this podcast, watch these interviews live and get access to the bonus Q&A that we're about to do, go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered. Go to hollylinks.com for links to all my platforms. I'm on a bunch of them. I'm also on OnlyFans. I haven't tried out Fansly, but I, I also- I actually really like it. It's, yeah? It's really good. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we'll have to check it out. I just like, I don't, I barely have time to like fucking do OnlyFans. Aww. No, my so. Fansly, it jumped. It like went from like zero to like 15 in like one month. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's well, good. I have loyal fans too, but that one doesn't do well. Yeah. I have a, I have a loyal fans as well. I also like my my attention is scattered yeah, all over the place. There's a lot of places. And Sex Panther. I have yeah. Like so many. I was on there for like a second and I'm like kind of still on there, but same thing. Because yeah. the problem is, is it is me and I'm just yeah. like, oh, you don't have the time. Yeah. It's a lot of time. And it's very weird because sometimes it'll be like so many people and then like zero. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> it's yeah. hard. Yeah. But anyways, go to hollylinks.com for access to, you know, all the places that you can find me. Thank you guys so much for joining us and I'll see you next week.